This bulletin proudly brought to you in association with Alex Campbell's menswear. South today. Police in eastern Southland and in Vicargo are searching for 24 year old Hori Gimel, who they allege stole guns and a police car last night. A Central Otago District Councillor says in Alexandra is becoming a breeding ground for litterbugs and vandals. And $3 million is going towards an investigation of future management options for Milford Sound. Kia ora, good evening, I'm Melissa Barton. Police in Eastern Southland and Invercargill are armed as they hunt for 24-year-old Hori Gamal, who they allege stole a police car and two guns in Gore last night. Southern District Commander Superintendent Paul Basham spoke to media in Gore this morning about the dramatic incident. Expect to see armed offenders squad members around Southland following a serious incident overnight. Police say Hori Gemmel is considered dangerous and should not be approached. They allege the 24-year-old resident of the Clutha district rammed a police car, doubled back on foot when officers were out of their car, then took the police car. The officers lost sight of the offender. The offender circled back behind a house and was able to gain access to the patrol car. The police officers had returned to the patrol car and attempted to stop the offender from uh, stealing the patrol car by smashing the window of the patrol car and attempting to taser the offender. That was unsuccessful, we believe, in due, uh, due in part to the clothing that the offender was wearing and the offender was able to decamp uh, in the patrol car. Superintendent Paul Basham says the stolen police vehicle has been recovered but police issue weapons are still missing. Uh, but what I can confirm is that two police lock pistols uh, were stolen by the offender uh, uh, and are uh, uh, still uh, at large. Police say there was another pursuit of a suspicious vehicle which was later found in Gores River Road. The armed offender squad committed, uh, commenced a search uh, also involving the helicopter with thermal um, search equipment and that search carried on through the night. They believe the alleged offender is 24-year-old Hori Gemmel who is still at large and has two police issue Glock pistols. They say Gemmel should not be approached and ask members of the public to let the police know if they see him. In Gore, the South Today. Queenstown Lakes Mayor Jim Bolt has ruled out relocating Queenstown Airport. The council, which owns 75% of Queenstown Airport Corporation, will not direct the corporation to consider moving the airport. An action group called Flight Plan 50 says the council should direct the airport corporation to consider relocating the airport. Group member Gillian McLeod says Mr Bolt and the airport corporation have not changed their thinking and their decision making process is utterly predetermined. Currently the plans are for a dual Queenstown Wanaka airport arrangement, which includes a $400 million development of Wanaka airport. In the meantime, Air New Zealand is to trial direct flights between Auckland and Invercargill from the end of this month. Alexandra is becoming a breeding ground for litterbugs and vandals, according to a Central Otago District Councillor. Dr Barry Wills says the park by the town's boat ramp has been badly damaged by skid marks with fast food rubbish regularly strewn around. What was formerly a pleasant grass park now churned to mud. This community park by Alexandra's boat ramp has suffered increasingly from drivers deliberately skidding their cars and one member of the Central Otago District Council wants it to stop. All these wheelies, people coming down here with their cars and making one hell of a mess, um, you know, it, it shows a lot of disrespect, disrespect for the community and uh, I'm, I'm just annoyed by it. I think it's, it's not the sort of thing we want in our, our township. Wills is asking people who live nearby or happen to be walking past to help catch the culprits. Could you try and get a number plate perhaps or um, some sort of identification so that we can actually um, track these people down and, and um, hopefully uh, apprehend them. And recently he was disappointed at having to clean up 
a lot of rubbish strewn around the park. Yesterday I arrived down here for a meeting with council and I found all this rubbish, mainly KFC and Domino's, um, in the car park and it was just absolutely disgusting. He's welcoming planned changes to litter infringement offences. A change coming into effect next Monday will enable the council to issue fines of up to $400 for littering and moves the burden of proof to the person responsible, not the council. In the old situation we had to take them to court and try and prove that they'd done it and that just really didn't work. So now instant fines will be able to be um, given and hopefully it might deter some of these people from dropping their rubbish in our uh, community. Wills says similar problems have occurred further along the river trail near the old Fulton Hogan quarry area and road signs have been vandalised by the lookout. In Alexandra, the South today. Three million dollars has been given towards the investigation of options for the future management of Milford Sound. The funding comes from the government's new International Visitor Conservation and Tourism Levy. Milford Opportunities Governance Group Chairman Keith Turner describes its funding boost as excellent news. Ten different tourism and conservation projects are to the first to be funded by the Border Levy, which came into effect in the middle of this year. Most international visitors are now charged a $35 levy, which is expected to raise about $80 million a year. The bounty is to be split between tourism and conservation. The Milford Group has several goals, including the increase of revenue for local businesses and creation of wider opportunities for Tiana, Southland and New Zealand. Further goals include upholding conservation values and reflecting the unique nature of Milford Sound. Still to come on the South today, we take a look at world politics with the latest edition of Global Insight, so see you after the break. Shop on Carol and discover a shop full of treasures. We have a fantastic range of vintage and retro clothes, upmarket clothing labels, collectible items, beautiful jewellery, quality linen and the best range of vintage haberdashery. At Alex Campbell Menswear we bring you the best value. We have bought a massive selection of moleskins and we're passing on the savings to you. Buy one pair, save $25. Buy two, save $60 and we have a great deal on our knitwear. Look at it all, 25% off all our knitwear. And to go with the knitwear, what about a nice warm shirt? These are 25% off too. And while we're doing the 25% off, what about on the jackets? 25% off them as well. Alex Campbell Menswear, it fits. So check us out for massive savings this winter. You've seen us in the street, now find us online. Check out shopon.org.nz. We have all sorts of treasures, from retro and vintage clothing to antiques, homewares and accessories. New items added every week. We're open 24-7. A poorly maintained heat pump can lose up to 35% of its output. The Mr. Heat Pump Cleaner team are experts. Their specially developed chemical wash is totally biodegradable. Call Mr. Heat Pump Cleaner and get the job done by the professionals. If you're at risk of developing melanoma skin cancer, you owe it to yourself to have a mole map. Mole map is coming to your area. Phone today to make an appointment. It could save your life. Garador Dunedin, delivering quality, stylish garage doors in Dunedin for over 17 years. New doors, replacement doors and maintenance are all part of Garador's quality service. Garador Dunedin offers a full range of modern quality doors to suit any home. Come visit the team. Step into Ross Cafe, located at Ross Home in North East Valley. We have a great range of hot and cold food, friendly service and a warm atmosphere that you are sure to enjoy. We look forward to serving you soon at Ross Cafe. If you're suffering from sciatica, lower back pain, hips and pelvis and knees, this technique will work wonders for you. The energy flow is transmitting through the muscles. 
Come and see Sunny Chip. Step into Op Shop on St Andrew and discover a place with plenty of bargains for yourself, your friends and the whole family. We have new items arriving every day. Visit us for a fabulous range of economy and upmarket clothing, accessories, books, shoes and more. Shop with us and support your community. Welcome back, Otago University international relations expert, Professor Robert Patman, says Russian President Vladimir Putin may not be able to contain the discontent expressed by recent mass protests in Moscow. In the latest edition of Global Insight, Professor Patman tells ODT journalist Bruce Munro the protests suggest Putin's attempts to undermine Western democracies are for him to hold on to power. Moscow is seeing its biggest protests in years. Tens of thousands of Russians have been out on the streets. The authorities have responded with mass arrests and a violent police crackdown. Welcome, Robert. Good morning, Bruce. These protests seem to have come out of nowhere. Did they? No. Um, in fact, just before Putin became president again in 2012, there were much bigger protests what, and nationwide, not just confined to Moscow. Mr. Putin quickly put those down once he got into power again. And um, the, the crucial thing to note is that there's been some level of discontent for about at least the last year. Mr. P Putin raised pensions, the pension age, from 65 to 67. Now, this occurred in a society where there's been economic stagnation, massive corruption and growing inequality. And I think some of those things are beginning to influence undercurrents of discontent. Um, when the latest of the series of protests occurred on Saturday, um, more than 1,300 people were arrested. But also, the police handled them in a very brutal fashion, which was captured by mobile telephones. So discontent about the exclusion of opposition candidates has morphed into discontent about police brutality. Why do you think the crackdown was so severe? I think that this is a very insecure regime. I mean, Mr. Putin, you know, we have, you have elections in Russia, but it's not elections as we would understand it in the West. Uh, these are, are simulated elections, really. Opposition candidates are routinely excluded. All the people elected are, are there with the approval of the regime. So it's a Putin system. And Mr. Putin's shadow... Uh, is long and um, I, I think you know that this is a situation which is potentially explosive. Um, one of the reasons Mr Putin has been backing extreme right-wing nationalist forces in Europe has been to deflect attention to some of the shortcomings at home in his very authoritarian government. Um, the Russian economy has gone into decline. It was growing very slowly in 2013, but between 2014 and 2016, there was no economic growth at all in Russia. Russia has an economy which is even smaller than Italy's. Now, given this economic stagnation, and given the fact that many Russians uh, are seeing those close to Putin living a very prosperous life, this is likely to cause considerable um, unrest in the long term. And is what's happening in Russia having any impact in Western countries? Well, I think what Mr. Putin, has, his foreign policy, has been having a big impact on Western countries because he's been trying to break the international rules-based order uh, upon which countries like New Zealand is critically dependent. And uh, that's why he supported the likes of the, the Brexit leadership 
That's why he supported the alternative for Deutschland in Germany, extreme neo-Nazi groups, some that they are trained in Moscow, they get backing from uh, Russia. Um, and what he supports Le Pen in France. Um, it's no coincidence that Mr. Putin is supporting all these nationalist populist figures in Europe. He is trying to break the EU. And why is he trying to do this? Well, because um, the model of liberal democracy does appeal to lots of young people. And he knows if he can say to Russian people, look, democracy in the EU and the United States is a mess, it's chaos, doesn't work. That means he's saying to the Russian people, you've got no alternative but to accept my leadership. But it's a high risk strategy for the reasons we mentioned earlier, because he's got problems at home. Thank you, Robert. Thank you. And thank you for watching. Catch us next time on Global Insight. Do svidanya. After the break on the South today, we have the latest edition of Otago ODT Rugby Chat with rugby correspondent Paul Dwyer, and we take a look at the weather heading into the weekend, so stay with us. If you're suffering from sciatica, lower back pain, hips and pelvis and knees, this technique will work wonders for you. The energy flow is transmitting through the muscles. Come and see Sunny Chill. Shop on St Andrew and discover a place with plenty of bargains for yourself, your friends and the whole family. For a fabulous range of economy and upmarket clothing, accessories, books, shoes and more. Shop with us and support your community. Garador Dunedin, delivering quality stylish garage doors in Dunedin for over 17 years. New doors, replacement doors and maintenance are all part of Garador's quality service. Garador Dunedin offers a full range of modern quality doors to suit any home. Come visit the team. Hi, Lindsay here from Alex Campbell Menswear. We're having a massive menswear liquidation. Don't panic, it's not our liquidation, it's Munns Menswear. They suddenly closed six stores throughout the country. Munns have left their suppliers dangling and desperate to move large orders. We've come to the party. It's our biggest purchase yet. You can save up to 70%. Yes, save up to 70%. We've got strictly limited stocks at the best deals. Alex Campbell Menswear, it fits. It's a big one. South Dunedin store. Don't miss this. A poorly maintained heat pump can lose up to 35% of its output. The Mr. Heat Pump Cleaner team are experts. Their specially developed chemical wash is totally biodegradable. Call Mr. Heat Pump Cleaner and get the job done by the professionals. If you're at risk of developing melanoma skin cancer, you owe it to yourself to have a MOMAP. MOMAP is coming to your area. Phone today to make an appointment. It could save your life. Step into Ross Cafe, located at Ross Home in North East Valley. We have a great range of hot and cold food, friendly service and a warm atmosphere that you are sure to enjoy. We look forward to serving you soon at Ross Cafe. You've seen us in the street, now find us online. Check out shopon.org.nz. We have all sorts of treasures, from retro and vintage clothing to antiques, homewares and accessories. New items added every week. We're open 24-7.
Thanks for staying with us. In this edition of ODT Rugby Chat, rugby correspondent Paul Dwyer talks to Otago Boys High School assistant coach Scott Opitaya and Kings High School co-coach Ryan Bambury ahead of this Saturday's final of the Otago Premier Schools competition. Welcome to ODT Rugby Chat, sponsored by Garador. Look, we're going to talk today about the big um, schools final this weekend. And to talk about that, I've got Ryan Bambury, the coach of the Kings, and I've got Scott Opatire, who's one of the coaches. There's about 8,000 coaches in the Target Boys because they've got so much money. Um, but that's what we want to talk about. It's a big game. They're playing for the ODT Cup, boys, which I'm pretty excited about. That ODT Cup's been going for probably four or five, six, probably six years now. So from your point of view, you've got to just basically get get everything right to win this game. Yep, I mean, uh, we've played OBs since Will and I've been involved uh, know, seven or eight times. Um, whenever we make a mistake, they've basically scored every time. Right. Um, and that's, uh, I guess, a mark of the quality. Um, you know, no disrespect to other teams below sort of our top four, but, you know, you can make those sort of mistakes and, and, and sort of get away with it. We well, know and we, we saw that on Saturday because they made two mistakes in that first half of Glacian and they, and they, and they banged pounce and, and you scored two tries and, and, then, and then the head started to drop. So, Scotty, from your point of view, yeah. what you just need to keep doing what you're doing? Yeah, I mean, if everybody does their job, and that'll be the biggest focus in uh, finals football, you just do your job. If everybody does their job, then great things happen. Um, that's pretty simple. Uh, yeah, just take one step at a time, one minute at a time, and see how we go. They're a great young pack, or great young side. They showed that when we went down to their, their, their field. It was a reasonably tight game. Yeah, it was, I thought it was a great game. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, they pulled away at the end. Yeah. Um, but... So, boys, I'll, I'll get this from both. So, let's talk about where you are this weekend in terms of how close to full strength were Targa boys. As close as you can be in finals time. Like I said, we've lost Warren. Um, he done a shoulder a couple of weeks ago. Was so that the midfielder? Yeah, that's the centre. So he's not back. No, he's not back at this stage. He's, so. well, I watched him last year. Very tidy football. So, yeah. he's, so he won't be there this weekend. No. No. So is he, is, he the, is he the only major loss for you guys? Pretty much. Um, obviously we lost Charlie Marsh earlier on in the year and he's right. easy out and he's sort of um, done and dusted. So yeah. yeah, so but other than that we seem to be okay. You're pretty good. Yeah. Okay, so let's talk about you. Let's talk about Kings. Are you pretty much at full strength? I know that you had this... I'm hearing stories about how good this wee halfback was, but he's been out for the whole season. I mean, not, and you won't see him at all. No, no. So that was Nate Hasty. Um, yeah, he's got massive reps on him. Um, yeah, he did his ACL in pre-season. Yeah. Uh, so he's, he hasn't played for us at all. Um, but uh, Tane Han, who's came in um, and played the whole season nine, has been unreal. Um, he's had a huge year for us, uh, driving that pack around. Uh, so, yeah. We're at full strength, which is uh, quite nice. We've had a pretty horrific injury run. Uh, but you've got everybody, apart from the wee half you haven't played, you've got everybody back. Everybody, everybody's on everyone's the been back, and everyone's been back now for, um, well, this is the third week in a row we've had our, our full team out. So, right. um, yeah, it's nice. Okay, so there it is. Look, it's going to be, it'll be tight, it'll be tense. Um, look, I'm picking the target boys, possibly with that with size of that pack possibly too big, too strong. And just remember that this game will be on Channel 39 on Saturday night, I think about 7 o'clock. It'll also be up on the ODT website, hopefully by 5.36. I'll apologise for the commentary team now because it'll be me and it'll be Kane Jury, who, who is very much an unknown quantity. But we'll talk to you again. In fact, in fact I'm going to talk to you again tomorrow because I'm going to talk Ranfurty Shield with the Otago coach Ben Herring tomorrow. So I'll back talking to you tomorrow. And now recapping tonight's top stories on the South today. Police in Eastern Southland and Invercargill are searching for 24-year-old Hori Gamil, who they allege stole police handguns and a police a patrol car last night. A Central Otago District Councillor says Alexandra is becoming a breeding ground for litter bugs and vandals, causing damage to playgrounds. And the government's new international visitor conservation and tourism levy is set to add $3 million towards investigation of future options for Milford Sound. And now look at what's happening in tomorrow's ODT. Welcome Craig Page. What have you got for us in tomorrow's paper? Oh, as you can imagine, plenty on the on the manhunt in Gore. Uh, latest uh, release from police not so long ago. They're still looking for him. They've uh, conducted uh, searches at various houses in, in the Gore area over the day, but no success as yet. Um, yeah, the town's been a real hive of activity, as you can imagine. The armed defender squad descending there. Uh, police in the area have been told to remain armed and, and public told not to approach this man as well. 
Uh, we'll be keeping tabs on the incident throughout the night as well and have updates on our website if there's any breaking news in that respect, but um, hopefully they can locate them pretty quickly and yeah. things can go back to normal. Uh, white bait season open today. Uh, we've been out and about seeing what the catches have been like. Uh, illustrations editor Stephen Jackery down in Fort Rose, Southland. He gets around that man. Uh, catching up with a white baiter of 55 years. Um, not much luck today, but his, his experience tells us they're going to eventually improve. So uh, fingers crossed. Sport and racing lift out as well. All about the All Blacks, of course. Big Bledisloe Cup clash this weekend. Um, it's going to be interesting. If the All Blacks can't do it, uh, there'll be question marks asked about the World Cup track down the, down the track so so no pressure on the all blacks this weekend thank you craig you can catch all of that in tomorrow's odt and now it's time for a look at the weather tonight's weather proudly brought to you by mole map today's southern view is of saint clair beach at sunrise Looking at the situation, a cell of very cold air will arrive over southern districts tomorrow night and Saturday, bringing snow to low levels, hail and gusty southwest winds. Starting off at the northwest of the South Island, Greymouth and Westport can expect rain and 13 degrees. Across to the northeast, Nelson and Blenheim are due for a cloudy day and a mild 16 degrees. Moving down to Canterbury, Kaikoura and Christchurch, you're both due to have a cloud or two and 14 degrees. Ashburton, you're the pick of the brunch on 15. Looking at what's in store for the southern towns, Belclutha, the Catlins, Gore and Lumsden, well, you're all expecting strong westerlies with rain and a high of 10. Travelling westward to the Central Lakes region, Alexandra, Queenstown and Wanaka can expect freshly westerlies with cloud increasing and highs between 9 and 11. It's wetter in Tiana with strong westerlies bringing rain and a high of 9. Up to the northern towns along the coast, Omaru and Timaru are in for moderate northwesterlies, increasing high cloud with highs of 14 or 15 degrees. Call it inland for Amarama and Twizel with freshening westerlies, increasing cloud and highs of 11 or 12. In Dunedin, you'll see high cloud increasing tonight with an overnight low of 7. Tomorrow there'll be sunny periods at first with cloud thickening and rain developing early evening. Moderate northwesterlies die out with a change to colder southwesterlies later in the day, a high of 14 and a low of 4. And it's going to be very cold on Saturday with wintry showers, some hail and sleet likely, snow to 200 metres and looking at a high of just 6 and a low of 3. In Invercargill, you can expect showers developing with an overnight low of 7. Tomorrow sees rain developing with gusty winds. Rain eases to showers during the evening. Snow showers are possible tomorrow night, looking at a high of 11 and a low of 5. And look out for wintry showers and hail and sleet on Saturday, looking at a high of just 6 and a low of 1. That's all from the South Today team this Thursday. For the latest news from the Southern Region, head online to odt.co.nz and follow Channel 39 on Facebook and YouTube. Thanks for joining us. Ka kite anō. This bulletin proudly brought to you in association with Alex Campbell's menswear. Supporting local content so you can see more of New Zealand on air.